We're here on Matt is on HD Sportsnet, presented by the JMU Alumni Association with head field hockey coach Christy Morgan. And coach, a one in one weekend wrapped up conference play and started the second half, wrapped up non conference play and started the second half of conference play. Let's talk about the win at Drexel. Come from behind win. How were you able to stay composed and how was the team able to fight back? Well, we went into halftime down by a goal, and, and, and almost for us, that, that's a, a blessing because I think we almost play better when our backs are against the wall. So um, we, we, we had a lot of um, great strategy going into that game, and we executed the game plan pretty well. We just didn't finish as, as well as we could have. We had, you know, in that game, we had players diving for balls. We had extra effort. We had great desire. So I was really pleased with that. And I knew going into halftime, even though we were down by a goal, that we were going to, we were going to fight and we were going to make things happen in the second half. And, and we did, and we were fortunate um, enough to earn a penalty stroke. And that's just basically either a flagrant foul inside the circle or, um, or a sure goal that is stopped by uh, someone's foot or someone's body. And, and in, in that situation, um, we can call on any player to step up and take the stroke. It's just one player stroking against one keeper. And um, after practice every day, we have three people practice their strokes just because it's more of a mental thing than it is a skill thing. Actually, it's the combination of both. Um, I chose Dana because Dana has a consistently great stroke and she has a great poise about her. So um, I, I, I was pretty certain that she would put it in, and she did. So, um, you know, and then at the end of the game, Bethany really made a great – we had a corner, and Bethany made a great move to get in front of the keeper um, to touch the ball, and it was just a beautiful goal. So I'm pleased with the, with the great effort in that game, and I'm pre pleased with the skill that we had, and we had a great energy. We had, we had so many fans there. We had a bunch of alumni there, and – we consistently have a great parent group there. So really pleased with the outcome, really pleased with the environment. And, and um, yeah, we wanted to use that and move forward. Um, but unfortunately, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> On Sunday, you did fall 2-1 at Rutgers in your final non-conference game of the season. Really, all the goals came in the first half, and the second half really seemed to be a defensive stalemate. But you all really seemed to have control of the game. So what was the flow like for you? And we, we really um, probably possessed the ball 75% mm, of the game. And um, they had a couple breaks, and each break they had, they, they got something out of it. And we had a lot of breaks, and, and we, didn't, we didn't execute. So um, we just didn't, we didn't perform to the, um, to the level that we're capable of, and, and that is the most disappointing thing. All you ask as a coach is that each day, you know, the players step out, and your goal is to, is to be the best you can be and reach your potential. So when you, don't, when you leave untapped potential out there, that's disappointing. And, and we did it that game. We, it, was, it was very disappointing, probably the most disappointing loss of the season. Um, in saying that, I can say that it's disappointing because I know what we're capable of. Uh, it's not disappointing because we're not, you know, we just aren't there. It's disappointing because I know what we're capable of. So um, we're not done. We've got we've got some great games coming up, two great games coming up, and our goal is to prepare this team for greatness. And we know our backs are up against the wall. And the great thing about this team is they can deal with adversity, and and they'll deal with it. And we'll be we'll come out fighting. So um, we have a lot of work to do this week, and and we'll bring them back together, and we'll do the work. And we'll be prepared. You do wrap up the conference slate this coming weekend, a trip to Northeastern and a trip to Hofstra. How are you feeling heading into this final weekend of CAA play? Well, you have to. I mean, going into any situation, you have to have a belief about what you're capable of. Um, we have had great game plans going into the game. We dissect the films that we get, and and um, and we have the ability to execute a game plan. So it's really about bringing it all together. And, and number one, coming in with that desire, we know that we need to beat these two teams or we're done or our season is done. So, you know, for the seniors, for, for everybody on this team, we know we need to get down, get dirty, and, and get it done. So how do I feel about it? I feel that I feel positive that we have the ability to do what we need to do. Um, and, 
you know, I, I, I believe we will. It's really about the players coming together and, and taking a stand and, and making a choice to come out and play not just with their heads but with their hearts every single minute. We have that ability, so um, I'm hoping that that happens. That's definitely been on display this season. Looking at the records this year, 12 of 16 games this season have been decided by one goal. How does that impact your strategy or your um, game plan with your team? You know, it is a one-goal game. We are not so good that you can just expect that, you know, we're going to be killing these teams. And there's so, so much parity out there. There's There are great teams in the CAA, better than I remember. And, um, you know, there are, there are great teams all over the nation. The great thing about one goal is we're in every game. We are absolutely in every game, and there are games that if the players, if the team had a greater belief about who they are and a greater identity, a clearer identity, we'd be coming on the other end of them, on the positive end of them. But we're still working a lot on um, developing that identity, the JMU identity. It's high energy. It's high desire. It's never say die. And... Um, and we're, you know, we don't have a whole lot of depth this year, so that's hard too when you're when you're playing a seventy minute game and and you sub very little. So it's, you know, we have a lot of things that are working against us. But again, you know, I think when you can battle in every game and and have a chance, now it's recognizing that it's that one extra step, it's that one extra, you know, dive. It's that one extra belief, you know, the attitude, having the attitude to step on the field and knowing that you can make a difference and then making the difference. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, we're inches away from greatness. And if everybody brings it, we could do whatever we choose to do this year. But it really takes every person on this team, whether you're on the field or off the field, to, to believe in the possibility and then take action around it. It's not just good enough to, to will it you got to take action around it. And so that's what I really try to teach the team, to teach the players every day, that you're, you're in control of your outcome, um, but you have to be in the moment and play it. Well, we'll see what outcomes the Dukes can produce this weekend as they wrap up conference play through the regular season with trips to Northeastern and Hofstra this weekend. Good luck with the final Thank push. you. Thank you very much.